<coughs> New Revised Quran Imaging Second Presentation Prepared by Rof Sharaf and Revised by Rof Rabni Edward We'll deal with, with stroke which is defined as acute neurological deficit <coughs> Could be ischemic and could be hemorrhagic Ischemia occur in 80% of cases of stroke while hemorrhage occur in 20% of cases of stroke. If we classify this 80% of ischemic infarcts, we will get 60% due to atherosclerotic occlusion of a large vessel, 20% of a small vessel occlusion, and this constitutes 80% of ischemic infarcts which are due to thrombosis. Now, 20% are due to embolism, and it is cardiac in 15% of cases, and others, inc uh, including uh, inflammatory conditions, granulomatous angites, systemic lupus, polyarthritis nodosa, temporal arthritis, takayasu, moya moya, venous sinus thrombosis, vasospasm resulting in hypoperfusion and subarachnoid hemorrhage and migraine. Primary hematologic coagulopathies like thrombocytopenic purpura. Again, moya moya and sickle cell anemia are considered together. This all constitutes 5% of the uh, uh, ischemic infarct, of the causes of ischemic infarct. And uh, these are embolic. Now come to the hemorrhage. We said that ischemia is due to 80% of conditions of lesions. Hemorrhage is due to 20% of is resulting in 20% of cases. It is parenchymal in 15% and subarachnoid hemorrhage in 5%. Finally, we should define transit ischemic attacks and uh, and know that transit ischemic attacks and reversible ischemic neurological defects deficits usually resolve within 24 hours. Infarcts occur in vascular distributions. The core is generally defined as the part of the ischemic region that is irreversibly injured, while penumbra is the peripheral rim of viable ischemic tissue which is underperfused but it is in danger of being infarcted. still viable, but is still in danger. Luxury perfusion is hyperemia of ischemic area compensatory to vasodilatation, secondary to parenchymal lactic acidosis. Lacunar infarcts refer to the occlusion of penetrating smooth cerebral arterioles, most often caused by arteriolar, arteriolar lipo hyalinosis or hypertensive ink vasculopathy or encephalopathy. Commonly affected are the thalamoperfiators, which affect the thalamus, lenticular striates affecting the basal ganglia, brainstem perforators affecting the pons. These are the main sites for ischemia, for lacunar infants. Thalamus, basal ganglia, and pons. Lacunar infarcts usually cause characteristic clinical syndromes, usually pure hemimotor or hemisensory or hemiparetic ataxia, dysarthria, hand deficit, and all appears as small ovoid lesions. There are many collaterals between the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery, for example, the maxillary ophthalmic collaterals, external carotid and cerebral arteries, external carotid and to the middle meningeal to the anterior cerebral and middle cerebral, external carotid to the meningeal branches of the vertebral artery, so there is a connection between external carotid and cerebral uh, through meningeal. And between cerebral arteries themselves, between cerebral arteries at the circle of Wallis, and uh, uh, the choroidals to the basilar from the internal carotid to the basilar through choroidals. 
and then we have leptomeningeal between cerebral vessels, leptomeningeal anastomosis. So there are collaterals. MR angiography or MRA is either done by non-contrast MRA, time of flight, non-invasive, 2D or 3D, used 2D used in the neck and to do MRV while 3D is used for the circle of various to detect intracranial stenosis phase of contrast MRA shows the direction of flow and is rarely used then contrast enhanced MRA used routinely to evaluate stenosis and occlusions of the neck vessels and their origins at the aortic arch so for the neck we use either 2D or use contrast but for the brain we usually use the 3D time of flight this is the appearance of the an MCA middle cerebral artery occlusion and how collateral starts to form to cover the area devoid of vasculature This shows the core of the region, and this is the penumbra, which is viable tissue, but in danger of being infarcted. Stroke lesions, as we said, ischemia in 80% and hemorrhage in 20%, and excluding ischemic strokes of embolic origin, which are 20%, either cardiac or rare embolic, we will just mention now the thrombotic ischemic infarcts. These are due to atherosclerosis of occlusion of the large vessels in 60% or small vessels in 20% resulting in lacunes. So thrombotic ischemic infarcts are due to atherosclerotic, atherosclerotic occlusion of large vessels including branch of the aorta, carotid stenosis, dissection of the vertebral, main intracranial cerebral arteries all of these are considered within this category this constitutes 60 percent of thrombotic ischemic infarcts and small vessel occlusion resulting in lacunes in 20 percent there are many risk factors for this of course atherosclerosis number one if there is a previous attack consider a new attack Hypertension, diabetes, obesity, hyperlipidemia, smoking, hematologic disorders, the use of contraceptives, and fever. Other causes of ischemic stroke, which occur in 5%, include the inflammatory granulomatous angitis, systemic lupus, polyarthritis, temporal arthritis, sakayasu, myomoya, venous sinus thrombosis, vasospasm resulting in hypoperfusion as in subarachnoid hemorrhage and migraine, and the primary hematologic coagulopathy, including thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Systemic, uh, I mean sickle cell anemia, is considered usually with myomoya. Now, come to the first slide Takayasu arthritis by definition Takayasu is multiple segments of narrowing segments of dilatation along the medium sized vessel usually the carotid vessels it results in sometimes occlusion of a large vessel like this and we get an infarct Takayasu arthritis Basset is usually a small vessel disease and as we said small vessel disease it usually involves those going to the thalamus or basal ganglia or bones and the result is an infarct at any of these regions. Pneumococcal meningitis and vasculitis could result in something bilateral affecting could it nuclei like this case 
in vasculitis due to reversible cases as in breasts we usually find that the lesions posterior and in flare it is evident that there is areas of edema while in diffusion related images they are not uh, evident because as we said these are viable tissue and the lesions are not manifested in diffusion the same in ADC map it's only seen as uh, small areas of hyperintensity but flare is conclusive vasculitis due to other causes can result in small basal ganglia or small brainstem lesions like here usually appears as a void uh, uh, lesions as hyperintensity 2 and restriction and diffusion denoting lacunar infarcts so vasculitis here can result in lacunar infarcts similar changes here vasculitis involving the middle cerebral right middle cerebral resulting in short segment of narrowing the one above is the 3d time of flight mra and the one below is the mip the intensity projection maximum intensity projection of the ct cta ct and geography and these are the different appearances of such a lesion. This is vasculitis. In Berbera, expect that there are multiple lesions of infarcts, usually as deep white matter ischemia, but well evident infarct is seen here. Horizontal or periventricular uh, distribution usually suggests MS, Dawson finger distribution. Cocaine induced vasculopathy is similar to MS, transverse or horizontal orientation. Systemic lupus erythematosus presents as patchy lesions because it is involves more than one more than one small vessel moya moya or the buffers of smoke it's an idiopathic progressive vascular occlusive disease commonly there is occlusion of the supraclinoid with numerous meningeal lenticulous striates stalamoid collaterals the main radiographic feature is the buffers of smoke numerous collaterals supplying the anterior Cerebral, middle cerebral, stenosis of or occlusion of the supraclinoid internal carotid, cerebral, art, cerebral cortical atrophy, infarcts, hemorrhages. Similar radiographic findings can be seen always in sickle cell disease. That's why they are mixed together and described together. Moya moya or the puff of a smoke disease and sickle cell disease. Here is the appearance the puff of smoke, collaterals, and here are the ischemic areas in the brain. Collaterals, a lot of collaterals, a lot of collaterals, a lot of collaterals, moya moya or the puff of smoke. The right internal carotid terminates, uh, sorry, the right, the internal cerebral, internal carotid artery terminates abruptly, and we have a lot of collaterals, enlarged perforators, meticulous striates. From this, 
to fill the stem and thus gives the buff of smoke buff of the smoke another case of moya moya disease there is not no middle cerebral and its branches and only until part of the anterior cerebral is seen in sickle cell anemia again we have infarcts and we have the puff of smoke due to a lot of collaterals Another case of abnormal vessels with dilatation and narrowing and puff of smoke is seen, collaterals. This is 3D time of flight MRA showing decreased flow rate enhancement in the left internal carotid, occlusion of the left supraclinoid internal carotid. The differential diagnosis is moya moya and sickle cell disease. Then we come to amyloid angiopathy, amyloid deposition in the walls of small vessels resulting in small vessel disease commonly occur in elderly, normotensive patients, areas of hemorrhage sparing the basal ganglia, foci of hemorrhage at the corticum delivery region. This is a distribution as seen in T2 star. Here it is. This is called amyloid angiopathy. So this is the first differential of multiple hemorrhagic foci. The second is hemorrhagic metastasis. So differential diagnosis is an amyloid angiopathy, second hemorrhagic metastasis, third is multiple cavernomas, give, can give the same appearances and hypertension, but hypertension usually affects the region of the basal ganglia. Thank you.